Hello and welcome. This is another episode of Great Network, and uh, today we will be talking about uh, engines. And uh, more specifically, I will be talking about uh, an aircraft uh, engine made uh, in Austria uh, by a company named BRP Power Train, commonly known also as Rotax. Rotax has been uh, on the engine market for quite some time. They have uh, been making engines uh, since 1920s and they have changed uh, since uh, Hans. They moved from Germany to Austria, where uh, now they are based. And uh, now they produce the engines for uh, the Canadian company for Badir Recreational Products. Uh, they make uh, engines for different applications. So, uh, Ranging from uh, motorcycles to personal uh, snowmobiles and boats, but uh, the last two decades they had uh, made the breakthrough in uh, aircraft engines and uh, they had pr produced uh, some uh, really successful engines. Uh, they target three main customer groups. They target the light sport and ultra light market they target the light aircraft market and also the last uh, target group is uh, military uavs as they called of course uav stand uh, for those who don't know stands for uh, unmanned aerial vehicles now their products range are uh, many two classes of engine. The first is uh, the Series 5 family, which is a two-stroke engine. It produces uh, today 65 brake horsepower. Of course, things like that uh, always change. New products come out. Uh, families are exp uh, expanding and uh, these numbers can always change, but today may of 2014, that's uh, the information, that's the product line. And uh, as I said, the 582 is a completely air-cooled two-stroke engine, which uh, is mainly used in uh, ultralight and uh, light sport aviation. The, this engine has great advantages and trades off power for them. This engine is really small, compact, lightweight, reliable, and uh, it's uh, a very nice trade-off for uh, lightness. Of course, since it's so small and so compact, it uh, doesn't deliver as much power and torque as uh, the bigger families, the 9th uh, series family. But uh, for an application like a motor parachute, you will always go for the lightest package and uh, you won't opt for uh, the 80 or 100 uh, variations of uh, products of Rotax because you can't use this excess power. Uh, also, another disadvantage of this engine is because it is a two-stroke engine, it has higher operating costs, meaning uh, it has uh, higher fuel consumption and uh, also it burns uh, oil with uh, a mixture of oil and fuel. Now, this hasn't stopped this engine producing, uh, selling more than 30,000 units. Yeah, 30,000. 30,000 is a huge number. Now, after that success, Rotax uh, continued on making uh, and expanding uh, their uh, line of products creating uh, the 9 series. 9 series started uh, 80 horsepower version 
and uh, it can be recognized today by their black shielded heads. It was uh, initially designed as an unearthed, uncertified uh, aircraft engine and uh, it was quite successful, but it had fierce co competition from other concept designs like uh, Zabiru's uh, engine and uh, the certified and uncertified versions of the Limba engines. Mm, but uh, eventually it uh, made a breakthrough. It uh, was used uh, in uh, a diamond uh, motor glider. And uh, this motor glider eventually was developed in the Diamond uh, DA20. The DA20 basic trainer uh, was uh, initially certified with a ver certified version of this engine, the 912 and uh, from then on Rotax uh, started uh, developing the product the products uh, after they have realized that uh, they had uh, the technical knowledge and uh, that the aviation was uh, a big enough market for the investment. Now, out of that engine, uh, 100 version came out. And thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, the 912 is uh, a combination of uh, liquid and uh, air cooled engine. This has, of course, some uh, drawbacks and uh, some advantages. Uh, but the biggest disadvantage of this type of engine is that uh, it uh, revs uh, much higher than uh, the typical uh, aircraft engines. So it requires a gear reduction system so it can uh, speed down the revolution speed of the engine to a revolution speed that uh, a propeller will uh, be able to operate uh, efficiently. Now, back to the product line. From uh, the basic 80 horsepower engine, Rotax developed uh, the next uh, engine that uh, it was designated as a 912S and uh, it can be recognized uh, by their green uh, shielded uh, heads. This uh, again was uh, a combination, had a combination of uh, liquid cooled and air cooled uh, engine and uh, was almost the same engine uh, but uh, was designed to produce more, spa more power. This is uh, the most common engine you will find uh, today in an airport where uh, light sport aviation, light sport aircraft uh, and uh, certified uh, aircraft of uh, that category are stationed. Today some really successful aircraft uh, fly with this engine. From this engine uh, an uh, even more powerful version was developed the 914 with, uh, which is recognized uh, from its uh, red cylindered heads. The 914 also is a turbocharged version. It was designed mainly for uh, UAVs which required uh, a turbocharger to be able to fly even higher and spy on us. And uh, they were certified so they can be used on uh, certified aircraft. I'm not aware of uh, an aircraft that comes out of the factory that is certified that uh, uses this type of engine. I might be wrong. You might know better. Also, all the 9 series aircraft engines 
have a 2000 uh, hour time before between overalls, which is a huge, huge advantage for them. Now, uh, this month, uh, Rotax also unveiled their uh, IS uh, Sport version of the 912, which uh, uses a Rockwell Collins uh, electric uh, control unit, or simply ECU, that uh, boosts the efficiency of the engine. That's a very, very positive thing because this line of engines was considered one of the most efficient aircraft engines money could buy. And now, with this uh, improvements, they were uh, successful on producing an uh, even better engine, a simpler engine to operate because, of course, it can control, they see you can control everything. This engine, even though having uh, these improvements on the older engine and uh, boosting uh, its efficiency to a great extent hasn't compromised anything from uh, the reliability perspective and uh, the durability. It still uh, has a 2000 hour TBO. It uh, still has uh, the same reliability and uh, the same uh, manufacturer standards of Rotax and uh, I, I don't expect to have uh, a big impact on the pricing of the engine. So, that's for the Rotax engines. Thank you very much for watching. I would uh, really like to read some comments for you about uh, any subjects or uh, any ideas you might have so I could uh, discuss it and uh, thanks for watching again. Bye!